Hello, you're listening to Hibs Talk. I'm your host as always, Gavin. Joining me today is Dave. Alright. And Stephen. Hello. How are we doing today, guys? I'm not too bad, yourself? Yeah, good. Hi. Right. Right. Let's see if we can back to uni and stuff, but other than that, I'm good. I'm looking forward to football tonight, Champions League. Hi, Champions League back tonight. Um, I don't even like the Champions League that much, but uh, Liverpool, PSG. Aye, right, that'll be a cracking game. We're really looking forward to that. I fancy PSG for that one, personally. Anyway, um, today's podcast, we are going to look at, uh, back at the Kamarnock game and we'll also have a wee talk about FA in the midst of that. We'll kick off with the news, obviously, and we'll finish up with the Dundee game and then some questions we got from folk on Instagram. But before we do any of that, got to get the usual sort of stuff out of the way. We have obviously teamed up with the 2.1. So as we've said before, the 2.1 is an independent Scottish football website run off the back of the support and generosity of its subscribers. They don't have ads or agendas. It's a group of passionate sports journalists that cover the Scottish Premiership and a bit more with modern football analytics, uh, long-form features and mini documentaries covering the culture of Scottish football. It's a subscription-based site where to get access to articles, you know, it's either £5 a month or £13 for the quarter or £50 for a year. The articles you get be getting access to, I mean, some of the ones I've been reading this week, there was the analysing of Hibs Thurl and Wynn over Kilmarnock, there is Martin Boyle continues to thrive while Hibernian falter, and I know some people might argue with that sort of um, statement, but there are statistics in there and uh, analysts of uh, his performances that kind of back it up and stuff. There's a really interesting article on Fraser Hornby and how he has all the attributes to be a future star for Scotland, uh, and of course the manager power ratings uh, week 8, which is you know always fun to see uh, how the, the power ratings are kind of going this week um, also just not on a Hibs sort of, or Scotland front there was Neil McCann hasn't fixed Dundee's problems from last season I found myself getting really in- interested in that and obviously we've got Dundee next week so uh, an interesting read to get in, into so if any of these are sort of the articles that would be appealing to you I mean a five or a month that's nothing um, or £30 for the quarter or 50 quid for the year but to help with that put in the promo code Hibs Talk and you'll get 10% off your first order as well so and that, if doing that, some of the money will come to us and that will help enable us to do more exciting things with the podcast going forward. So that would be a big help and we appreciate that support. So that's the 2.1.com forward slash subscribe with the promo code HIBSTOP. Anyway, I've blabbered on for long enough about this. Let's get on with the news. Mikel Nellum, a left back, 28 in four days time. So on Monday, he'll be turning 28. Um, he's a 70 rated on FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's not a done deal yet it might be by the time this goes out but as of recording it's you know t- there's been positive talks held and it looks like he's going to sign free agent after leaving fire in order in the summer do we think that this is going to be competition for left back or do we think this could be Lewis Stevenson moving out the team could he actually be taking Lewis place in the team just got to be another backup. Do you think? Yeah, seventy rated though. Another, another rare, rare he's, got good, he's, he's got a good uh, CV. This is the probably going to be Stevenson's biggest challenge to the left back position that he's had in the last few years. Because obviously the couple you just named are now obviously nowhere near good enough. Uh, not obviously I've not seen much of this guy, but he played in the Champions League and that with Fire Nord, he can't be that bad. Yeah, especially with the amount of appearances and that he's made. Um and the way the defence is the now I think that's probably why Lennon's like maybe try to get cover from their mm. positions and I mean we are leaking goals at the moment is Stevenson part of the problem or is it more centrally I would say it was centrally personally my, my own personal opinion it's the protection the defence get and FA but we'll get back to that <laughs> <laughs> but then again even if it was a protection that defence were getting like Stevenson's playing so far wide that I can't really put you can't really put him in that category mm. like I mean he's he's probably been one of the better players so far this season mm. it's hard to say I mean we don't know much about this boy this boy could be <clears> a left back that can slot into a left centre back position in a back five um, or he could be a out and out full back that is going to you know be challenging for the left Full back role, he could be quite competent with right foot and he could maybe slot in at right back as well. We don't know. It's we'll good that we're getting an extra body in. Yeah, we did need more. So, yeah. um, aye. It's just weird to, to release that statement saying, oh, well, all our business is done, and then you go out and sign somebody. Uh, opportunities come up. I know. 
I think Sheffield Wednesday tried to sign him as well. That's oh, we're looking yeah. at him. Yep. Well, so, bit of competition for him. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, he comes, and we'll, we'll wait and see what happens there. Um, and next thing was Flo Camberry has been discussing his partnership with. Oh, fucking hell! I'd forget this. His name's Jamie McLaren, the other boy. <laughs> no, that David. It's the comment I'm looking for. Flo Camberry has been discussing his partnership with Jamie McLaren. Talking about the fact that uh, he was happy to see Jamie come on as a sub. I think everyone can see the connection. I gave him the pass and he was filled in the penalty area. He wasn't he? Uh, people saw we have a good partnership. So, obviously, McLaren started on the bench. Lennon saying he's not entirely match sharp yet, which we feel like we've been saying on this podcast for weeks. Um, is the long-term future of the two of them up top in some sort of formation? It needs to be. Like it worked so well January uh, to the summer that it would make no sense for it not to be yeah. the long term fix. Made no sense at all. Stephen? Yeah, definitely agree. Like I think that obviously we just need the three midfielders and like behind them sorted. We do, yeah. Let's look at the commander game first. Uh, I mean, only one place to start. Stevie Mallon's free kick. First off, thoughts on the free kick? That was some ping, wasn't it? They that you've seen the even the analysis analysis on sports scene, uh, Thompson saying the exact same thing. He, he's one of the best in the league at set pieces, and the way the way he hits the ball and whips across it, now nah, it's a good hit. I personally think the keeper should have saved it because that's his, his side. But Stephen, aye, yeah, really good. Um, I think it's just coming to expect it now. Eh? Yeah. Um, like obviously we watched the. Two under twenty ones games over the uh, international break, and he done nothing for them both games. But it's good to see him playing well for the club, and that's what matters. So, and I mean, in terms of the the free kicks, um, Stephen just sort of said there, we've kind of come to expect them now. Is he a better free kick taker than Riordan and Griffiths? I think better than Riordan. He's more consistent than Riordan. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd probably still say that Griffiths was better, but. Uh, a tough one to call you. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably say he's more consistent than Griffiths as well. well. To be fair, like Griffiths scored two free kicks in three minutes against England, so you can't really <laughs> get any more consistent than that. But <laughs> it's quite refreshing to have somebody that's good at free kicks. Cause it has been a few years since we've had that option. Where you get that excitement when somebody stands up at the outside the outside the box. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. You get that buzz being like, oh. Everyone gets their phones out and stuff because they actually believe it could be. Yeah. Um, the amount of videos from Malin's free kicks are getting higher and higher and higher. Yeah, for different. There's more and more people recording every time he gets a free kick. So, uh, yeah, um, really exciting. Um, like you say, uh, before we get to uh, the next set piece, he was involved in. Greg Stewart had a chance. Um, David Gray went jumping in. Effie went jumping in. Heidman got beat twice by him, and then uh, the chance went wide. Why were the defence so eager to, you know, jump in and rather than close them down? I mean, was it good? To, do, does uh, Greg Stewart deserve credit for playing well with, in that move, or was it too easy for him? Well, there was two things happening. There's, Greg Stewart kept his cool mm-hmm. and played well, and then we didn't keep our cool and we're diving in. So when we're defending, we need to be more structured. But it was like. Almost all of a sudden, it became last ditch defending off you quickly. Like, so every player was di- defending like it was last ditch diving aye, in. Like David Gray was at the halfway bit. line. Aye, aye, like diving in at the uh, aye at the byline, and then the ball wrecked went uh, Greg Stewart's way, and then I Hyman dived in like you said, uh, and so did Ambrose, and he he done the two of them, and then we were fortunate to get away with that one. Uh, and next up, we had uh, the David Gray's goal, um, Malin's corner. Stephen, what was your thoughts on Gray's movement? It's a lot better now. I think he's just a lot sharper than uh, before he had that injury layoff. Um, his movement in the box, I think he maybe moved about a good 10 yards to get the header anyway. Um, so, I mean, it was some header at the end there as well. Uh, definitely a lot better, and it's good to see that in the box. He definitely knows how to. Header above for so a corner. Uh, well, Neil Lennon mentioned it in his interview with Hibs TV with Cliff uh, Pike that it's a G- Gary Parker's move. Um, he actually studied the way right. that Kamarnock set up the uh, at corners and that, and then 
So he said it was good that that type of thing's paid off. Like yeah. Parker will be pretty happy with so. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did, I, I, that explains why um, him and Alan Combs things like that were acting the way they did when the goal went in. Um, yeah, that explains that. Um, okay, next. Let's. I mean, we've kind of mentioned him already. Effie's performance. Uh, the first commandant goal. Should he be doing better there? I think he's got to get his cell either in front or like put a wee bit more pressure on uh, Brophy that mm. he's like making it harder to get his shot away. Mm-hmm. He gets his shot away far too easy and if he doesn't even put a, put a leg out. Uh, no challenge just and, put in. Uh, and we'll come back to it then, but we can't say that he was worried to get away a penalty because of what he does later on. He obviously hasn't got that in his head. He just didn't put his leg in. It's so maybe slow to react. It was a really good uh, build up to the goal, like but. yeah. Um, and that was the way the weird, the strange thing that, that Hibbs went from you know diving in with the uh, the Greg Stewart chance to then going two nil up and completely standing off everybody, and they got what was it, fourteen passes in or something, um, crazy amount and just sort of with ease just passing it about. There was no high press from Hibbs and um, at the AGM last year. That's apparently the the model Hibbs were going for. They were going to become this high pressing team. And that's almost a year later, and you know we're we're conceding a goal like that. It's a bit strange. Um, Stephen, what was your thought? What's your thoughts on going forward with FA? I mean, you've kind of given your thoughts in the last few podcasts, but I mean, we've changed to the back four for this game. Do we, do you feel that we should keep the back four? Um, and if so, with Hanlon coming back fit, is should FA be dropping out? I uh, de- definitely need to. I mean. Like you just says about the the first command at goal there, like FA he stands off, but he lets them run right up to the eighteen yard line before he does anything. He, like he just keeps running back, and then by the time he does get there, like there's nothing he can do, um, and with, because of his movement and as a defender, so, um, like you says when Hanlon comes back, I think you're going to, need to play Porteous and Hanlon centre backs if you're keeping the four. I'd maybe think it's about time that Whitaker comes out and even put Ambrose as a defensive midfielder. Potentially. Um, I mean, he's got he's got the pace and he's good with the ball at his feet. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, he can work a ball from midfield into attack um, without as much defensive duties that he's got the now. And, um, I mean, I think that he'd be better served as a like the last line before the defence mm-hmm. than uh, like your last line before the keeper. It's just too much pressure on him. I think. I mean, you mentioned that he's, he's uh, in terms of what he's doing well. He's uh, winning offensive duels um, five at five against Kamarnock. He's winning aerial duels four at four. Uh, when he's been intercepting the ball, he's been uh, the four times he did, he cleared it four times. So all that sounds great. Um, dribbling, you know, you mentioned he's good with the ball. Three uh, dribbles and th- all three were successful. However, you look at his defensive duels. Um, out of the seven he went for, he only won two of them. That's not good enough for a defender. That's, that's your bread and butter. Your defensive duels, and he's only winning two out of the seven. Um, twenty nine percent. That's really. Um, I think just on that though, it's the, it's the fact that when he was playing at Celtic and when he plays for Nigeria and stuff like they're a lot more laid back. Like they've not got the same pressure that Hibs have. Like when it comes to defending. Like they've they press that high that they don't need to worry about like having to track back for for catching the ball again. Whereas we let play we let teams come on to us with stupid tackles like what led with Greg Stewart and that. Like it's just we things they kinda get the basics right, a defending. Mm-hmm. He's not a defender. He'd he'd be best served as a as a defensive midfielder or a centre mid. In my opinion. I agree, but I don't, I don't think he'll get put into the defensive mid. No. So I think he's, if Lennon's going to persist to him, then it's going to be the centre half position because Milligan will come in and Bartley will come back. So he's he's going to, their two are going to be in there in front of, with, along with Whitaker, is playing that role. Would we not be better? I mean, I know Gray played well, and um, apart from obviously jump diving in and stuff. Um, David Gray's obviously had his injury worries. Would we be better looking at him as a right back if we're going back to a back four, or are we better sticking with him? Um, um, and your best, th- your best sticking with Gray as a right back, and then if but if, if Gray's not fit, well, if he's not fit, then Ambrose should be playing right back because mm-hmm. he, then he's got the option to move forward. But again, like like I says, I mean, if what Dave says about Milligan coming in and Bartley coming back. To me, Bartley's finished. Like he'll maybe play the game against Hearts, game against Rangers, but apart from that, 
that's when, I mean, Ambrose is merely a defensive midfielder for me. Can he keep playing him at centre back? Because we've just got to keep leaking goals. Mm-hmm. But this, we said the same thing about David Gray, though, where the, just when you say Bartley's finished, and David Gray's not finished. I don't but, think Bartley's finished either. So I, I think keep Bartley a chance in there, and I think he'll do a better job than Whitaker mm-hmm. at breaking up the play. Um, and then see what happens. No, I mean, I mean that he's he's finished like under Lennon. Like he's not got to be like a first choice defensive midfielder, especially with bringing in Milligan and that as well. Like like I say, Bartley's like specifically in the team now for like the Hearts game, the Rangers game, where he's got to be like going in for like the lunging tackles and that. Um, I think when he sits in front of the back four, everyone just, or whatever the defense is, everyone feels a bit calmer because. He does win an awful lot. Uh, the right. balls that he's going in for. You're right. I just, I just think that like it's the exact same reason like with why Whitaker's playing every game, every game ninety minutes. It's things like that that you've got to put into perspective and why Lennon's not choosing him. So going on to Whitaker now. You just mentioned him there. Greg Stewart's goal. Fantastic goal for Greg Stewart. Sensational hit. However, Whitaker. How does Whitaker? I mean, it's probably because Whitaker doesn't have the pace, but he gets away from Whitaker too easy, doesn't he? Like, uh, I just, I, I hate that we're getting too, we're bashing Whitaker too much, but we have to, you know, see it as well, we see it. Well, he didn't have, he didn't have a nightmare. No, um, he had a better game, yeah. but with that goal, with that goal, he's he's standing off, he's but he's quite quite far off him, and then when the ball comes to uh, Greg Stewart, like you say, there's a he like faints his body and then just turns away from him. And then all of a sudden he's like a bit f- five six yards away from Whitaker mm-hmm. with it even touching the ball. Mm-hmm. It's just it is good movement, but at the same time you've got to have that protection, and that's what, probably why the defence is under so much pressure because it's not got that protection in front yeah. of it. And in terms of you know we mentioned Effie with uh, the defensive duels, uh, Whitaker went in for eleven tackles and won one of them defensively so 9% of his defensive duels the fact that he's having even to go in for 11 tackles <laughs> like it's I mean that's what he that's what his role is now and if he can't even do it then why is he in the team yeah alright um, ok uh, just quickly last thing on the command game uh, both penalties um, did you think the McLaren one was a penalty no chance kicked his leg back into broad foot I thought, I thought McLaren was really clever it was clever but it wasn't yeah. a penalty <laughs> uh, but he kicks his leg only because he kicks Broadford first. I bet. See, I never seen that until sports scene. Even the clips I'd seen before that, yeah. I, I was like, eh, probably it's a penalty. I can see why the ref gave it. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. I, 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 I clever claim for it as well. It's yeah. clever, but um, soft, like. But and then <laughs> if he's uh, should have come on at Cavada penalty. Yes, <laughs> they should have. <laughs> yes, he just wipes him out. Aye. Um, why does Broadford like as Michael Stewart says on sports scene? Why does um, Broadfoot go down holding his head he gets kicked in the ankle and he goes down holding his head I think that's why he didn't win it yeah couldn't tell you yeah crazy um, anyway let's uh, move on to the Dundee game then um, Dundee have played five league games this season and how many wins have they had zero Neil Pla, they've got five defeats so not a good start to the season although last season it was very similar they lost five of the first six games last season They've only managed two goals um, in their, their five games and they've conceded 11. So, first question for both of you is, will Neil McCann be in charge on Saturday? He'll be in charge on Saturday, but he'll not be charged, <laughs> in charge the following week. <laughs> yeah, I think I think if we beat them um, convincingly, mm-hmm. then he'll be away. If we well, only beat them at like 2-1 or something, then he'll, he'll still be there. Well, thanks for you know stealing my next question. Will the thing is, will he keep his job if Hibs win? So oh, well, up, I didn't read your bit of paper, mate. I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, you did. He's they've they've not even got a striker now either because Miller's. Well, that's my next question. Him. Will Kenny Miller have his red card rescinded? No. They've put, they've put in their appeal today. Will his red card be turned over? No. Now, no. 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 Should it be rescinded? No. That's obviously no. It's the SFA though. <laughs> Think of some of the decisions that have been made this season. Will it be overturned? Well, the only teams considering that are getting... it's the SFA. <laughs> only... Ah, <laughs> fact, M- Miller's a a wee orange man, so it might be <laughs> overturned. <laughs> but remember, remember, he's just sued Rangers and got f- like a hundred grand back for them. So then the SFA will be out to hunt him. Ah, he still scored loads of goals against Celtic and celebrated even. He scored, he he scored goals for and... Celtic against Rangers. Ah. <laughs> nah, it won't be rescinded, and it shouldn't be rescinded. Fair enough. Okay, uh, any who? So who would you say is their danger man? 
That Kasunga. Yeah. I'd probably say he's the main man in the now. Especially Ken. attacking. <laughs> Kenny Miller. <laughs> <laughs> um, score predictions then. 2 0 Hibs. Not even got a day one. <laughs> Are you know getting bored of doing them after getting some I'm so wrong? Just go with something normal. Then he'd be stupid. Even, even if I say something normal, they're right. Fine, 1 0. 1 0. You're going 1 0. What an absolute game. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what else do you want me to say? If I say that we're going to win, then we'll end up getting humped again. Ah, but you come up with eight one in that. Just say like any like one nil. Even if I say, even if I say like two one, then we'll probably still get humped. I'll yeah, probably get beat two right. one. Right, let's even go one each. Right. Right. I'm gonna go three one Hibs. Three one. Aye. In fact, okay. I, why did I give us a clean sheet in a game? If I, well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I think anyway, I'll, that. I'll go two 0 though. Okay. Um. So we're going to finish up with some uh, fan questions got some questions on Instagram uh, I've already answered them from my own point of view you can check it out on the story on Instagram but uh, put the questions to you guys so first question best signing of the summer not including Canberry or McLaren Marlon yeah well, it would have to be Marlon because he's returned Aye, that's who I went for as well um, oh crap Starting 11 versus Dundee. You can go first. So, I'll tell you what, I'll go, while you start having to think about it, I'll go through what I've went for. I've went for Bogdan and Goals, a back four of Gray, Porteous, Hanlon and Lewis Stevenson, uh, Milligan and Malin as the two central midfielders, Boyle on the right, Horgan on the left and Canberra and McLaren up top. 4-4-2. Four, four, yeah, is uh, McGregor back? Yeah, he was on the bench against Kilmarnock. Yeah, I'd take Porter suit and put McGregor in. Ooh. It's Hanlon back. Player of the month, August. Yep, I think just give him a wee layoff. Mm -hmm. The now, Hanlon and McGregor have got a good partnership. Fair enough. Tweak it a wee bit, see if it works. We need to try and get a partnership that works good. Hanlon had a shot out that week there. Um, so, aye. Nice. It'd be the exact same with Hanlon and... Ambrose. Do you so think it'll be the same? Be the same, the same team as Gav. Except, do you think it'll be? be uh, but Ambrose what would you middle? go for? Is what we're asking. What would I go for? Aye, what would you go for? You're in charge. What would you pick? Well, I'd, I wouldn't have Milligan starting. I'd be putting Ambrose as defensive midfielder and right. having Hanlon and Porteous. Hanlon and Porteous at the back. Fair enough. Okay. Um, so next question: uh, Stevie Mallon, the best free kick t uh, kicker taker in Scotland. Remember Lee Griffiths. So we kind of talked about this one earlier on. Uh, what's your thoughts? Like of all time? No, in Scotland just now. Just now? Well, Griffiths is not even getting a game. <laughs> uh, so you're saying Griffiths? Uh, I'm saying Marlon. What? Well, it's got to be Marlon because uh, like he just said, Griffiths doesn't even play. Right. Okay. Um, what will be a good season for us with the team we have just now? And, and, well, and, to me... I always want to improve anything below what last season's a bad season. So, what? how many points we finish on? 67? Mm -hmm. Good season. Anything below that? Not a good season. Okay. That's the way I honestly look at it. Steven? It's got, it's got to be like that. I'd be expecting third. I'd be disappointed if we never got third. Hmm. Aberdeen know. are poor. We've lost, I know, but we've lost our whole midfield, so it's going to have to I'm, 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 I'm going to accept that Rangers are got. That's it. They're Rangers Celtic are now they're in rehang in my opinion I think they'll pull away they'll be first and second right Celtic will win it Rangers will be second in the rain and then I think Hearts no, I don't even want to talk about them Aberdeen are poor and well you can't just accept that Hearts are going to finish above you so you need to finish above them I think it's I think it's third there Same. honestly there so I've, I, I've already said so third, third I. I. Uh, best player at the club at the moment I went for McLaren. It's natural like ability and what he can give the team. Horgan's had a decent start. Yeah, I, I I think it's far too early to say best best player at the club. Uh, Dave's deep in thought. I really am thinking about this one. Best player at the club now. It's about it is a bit of an open book. Like last season, it was so easy just to have ping a couple, but. Mm -hmm. Hanlon most consistent maybe. I'd maybe even go for Grey so far like, Grey's been class this season so far 
Um, somebody's asked, uh, just a matter of time before we catch and overtake the dirty jambos, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> well, they're, they're saying they're next to fixtures. Um, we well, didn't you didn't want to look focus on them too much, but their next two fixtures are favourable towards them. Yeah, and so they could go on this wee run for quite a wee bit. Uh, who's our most important player right now? So not Beth, but who's most important player? I went for Camberry because I think he's vital to how Lennon wants to play. Hanlon. Yeah, I, I probably agree with Camberry, right. but Hanlon, I would kind of agree to. Uh, who's your favourite player of all time? Sozzy. That I've seen. Sozzy. Ah, uh, this person said mine's is Frank Sozzy. Uh, I always tossed up between Sozzy and uh, John Hughes. I just loved the passion he played with. He's just, aye, brilliant. Um, do you think Bartley, Slivka, Whitaker and Laidlaw will leave at the end of the season? I think uh, Slivka, Laidlaw and Whitaker will become a coach or something. Who else? Bartley. <laughs> Whitaker will still be playing next season. <laughs> oh, probably. Whitaker's testimony on the year next year. <laughs> Bartley. I think Bartley. he's getting the last year's contract. Yeah, I, in fact, I think all of them will be away, probably. Mm. Uh, Young and so this person saying that they believe that Appiong and Horgan... Oh, no, sorry. Appiong should start over Horgan next week was class when he came on. What do you think? Should we start them both or do you think... Um, Boyle should be dropped and start the two of them or what? Well, really just depends on how you set up the midfield. Um, if you're playing three five two, if you go back to that, then there's no reason why Horgan and Ayupong can't play together. Like you could put Ayupong on the left and then put Horgan through the middle mm. with Malin and I, just, I, I, I mean, I don't know about I'm playing on the left because I don't think he's got the defensive abilities to play there. I mean, we're, we're leaking goals as it is, so it's sick him at left wing back. You know, he's got the defensive abilities other than being fast enough to run in front of the attacker <laughs> to then try and win the ball. I don't think he's got the defending skills of Stevenson or the new boy if he comes in. Just need to see you. Have to wait and see. Um, <laughs> uh, this is from Liam, who was on our Livingston podcast. Uh, how did um, Stephen feel after his score prediction of 8-1 versus Livingston? To be fair, it was a bit of a piss take, and I did, <laughs> and I did say that we need to win eight, no, eight one or something. Right. I never says that it was got to be eight one. You uh-huh. just assumed. <laughs> Sounds like a backtrack. I know. I'm willing to listen back. You to all that. need to listen back, but I did say that we need to win. Uh, final question: pre, uh, favorite pre match drink. Oh, are we painted tenants. Aye. Sort of dark fruity. Ah, you're you're the dark side. Aye, I, I do like a, a lager, but I'm quite partial to an ale as well. Aye, aye, no, I think I'm wrong. If I'm rough, I'll be iron brew. Aye, no, no it's, aye, it's, 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 if it's been a blue record and pernol. Aye, <laughs> if it's been a session the night before, then yeah, it's something like iron brew to kind of continue the recovery. Yep, or a look as aid maybe. Aye. If it's been a bad one. Aye, aye, so um. Aye, I'll, I'll, we'll finish up there and I'll let you go to uh, watch the, the Champions League. Um, thank you very much for coming along, guys. Cheers. No worries. Enjoy the games tonight and uh, we will be back next week to look back at the... We'll try and squeeze in a podcast at some point to maybe look at the Dundee game and ahead to the Aberdeen game. If not, it might be a review of the Aberdeen game. We'll just need to look at the schedules and when we can all meet up again. But we might try and get something done at the weekend. Maybe Sunday night. No, I know for me you won't. I'm away to Poland. <laughs> Get it up, he's he's okay. going to work on Monday, eh? No, I'm not, no. You're not. That right, bad start placement, bad start start placement on Monday. Good. I'm looking forward to it, though. Good. I'm looking forward to Poland. <laughs> cheap pints. <laughs> aye, aye. No tenants, but over cheap pints. Cheap. Nice and cheap. Okay, right. Thanks, guys. And uh, we'll be back next week. Cheers. Bye. And to finish up, folks, just to say I was lucky enough to be invited onto the Stramash podcast. Uh, by the minute, I do a number of podcasts, including uh, an Aberdeen Celtic and all that sort of stuff. But this season, they've also started a Scottish football podcast called Stramash. So you can find it on the likes of iTunes. We've posted links and things like that. Where I went on and discussed the, the Hibs game, a bit more about that. We also discussed the Hamden decision, the SFA the third European competition that they'll look into introduce and the impact that could have on the likes of Hibs. So all those sort of topics are covered in that. If you've in the, if you're now in the mood for more podcasts, head over and check that out. 
really had a good laugh with the guys and uh, hopefully we'll be back on again soon. Good night, I got it.